Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be discussing something that I think every single WWE action figure collector across the world has ever encountered. This is probably, this can probably go and span across all different types. I'm talking Mattel, Jax, LJN, Hasbros, whatever the hell you've got in your collection, guys. I think you can relate to this in some sort of capacity. Today, we're going to talk about the worst things that can happen to your WWE action figures, like getting mugged right here by Punisher Devitt. You know, your, your figures are just walking along and then they just get a whip pulled out on them. Obviously, that's not what we're talking about, but I figured it'd be hilarious for the thumbnail given the Stone Cold Steve Austin screaming head sculpt. We have the Punisher Devitt, and both of these guys have some problems that we're going to discuss here today, so I figured what better way than to plug them in here and get creative right here. So obviously, Punisher Devitt's got the gun drawn on the Stone Cold, and the reason that is is because the first issue that we're going to talk about with a lot of WWE action figures, the worst thing you can do, you know, you go to the Wally World, you go to the Target, you get the figure that you've been look, looking for. You're like, oh shit, I want that Elite 75 Pete Dunn. Can't find it anywhere. You go to the you go to the store. It's right there on the shelf. You bring that hoe home. You crack him out of the packaging for your for for your people that aren't mock collectors. You know, you crack him out of the oh my god in heaven. You crack him out of the packaging, and you know you get him out of there, and you you take him out, and you're all excited. You're like, can't wait to pose around this Pete Dunn, right? You get him out, get him ready, and then you go to articulate him, and he's just a damn fidget spinner disguised as an effing WWE action figure, man. How upsetting is that dog sh right there? Are you serious, Brad? You gotta be joking me! You've gotta be joking me! You've got to be joking me. And I feel like certain figures have this problem. I don't know exactly what the full issue is, but I do know that it seems like certain figures always have it or that they're in the realm of possibility to have it. And uh, this DX Triple H body is what we got going on. I did pop the Jax Deluxe Aggression Stone Cold Head Skin on there. This is a beautiful looking fix up, but it's kind of ruined because it has a fidget spinner waist, man. I've had so many figures like this, and I think a lot of you can real relate to this issue. Another one I have is my John Cena. This is my first defining moments or second defining moments John Cena right here. The, uh, I'm not saying my second physical one. I'm talking about my second one as in the second defining moments. The first one was the draft lottery. This is the second one. This one has a huge issue as well. I don't know which fidget spinner waist is worse, but they're both god awful and it's just so freaking disappointing when you get a brand new figure and you have to deal with that. I think that is definitely an issue that a lot of us face and I'm address a lot of them here today. So, that is the first one. The loose waist is a huge one, and it pisses me off, Brad. Nothing worse than a loose waist action figure, okay? Let's dive into the second issue. Not only do we get loose waist, guys, but we also get other loose parts sometimes, specifically with the legs. Now, this Elias figure, it was it's not the worst example I could find, but his legs are on ball joints, and while we all love ball joints, we freaking love them, and I'll take ball joints with loosey-goosey legs all freaking day over the pine cone joint. Oh, my God, stand up. Stand up. I'll take these uh, ball joints, uh, a little bit loose ball joints over these pine cone joints all day. You guys know the pine, pine cone joints if we've ever seen. Uh, that's what I call them. I got them for one of my friends who named it that. You guys know it's not the ball joints. It's the other kind of joints that are in there. They kind of look like ratchets. You can call them ratchet joints. They're not necessarily ratchets, but they kind of have that little indention in there. You can't just remove these legs. You know, you'll snap the figure if you try to remove those legs. Ball joints are the ones that are removable. They're always on Seth Rollins figures are always typically on John Cena's unless they have the, the longer shorts mold. Roman Reigns always has them. You guys get what I'm talking about. Okay, so the loosey-goosey leg problem happens a lot with certain figures. You guys can see here, they're just wobbling and dobbling. I've seen worse than this. I have some figures that are just so god-awful they can't even stand. They'll just do the damn splitsies. This Elias figure is great in the head sculpt. I don't like it necessarily for the lower legs and foot problem, but I'm specifically referring to when the legs get super loosey-goosey and they're shaking like this right here. Uh, Bradshaw from Elite 38 has this problem. Farouk from Elite 38 can also have this problem. Let me know down below if you guys have experienced this issue as well. The loosey-goosey ball joint legs is also a big issue that I've seen. And another loose issue problem before we move into the pinecone joint problem, this is the issue here with the loosey-goosey legs. You got the loosey-goosey waist. And then you have the AJ Styles shoulder problem. And I think everyone who's ever owned an AJ Styles, maybe you haven't. If you haven't addressed this issue, if you haven't 
face this issue head on, then you guys don't know what I'm referring to. But this right here, guys, I don't know if it, this arm kind of has it. Uh, this arm kind of has it. You guys can see what I'm saying. It's like super duper loose. Like filming Hell's Gate was kind of a problem because I'd get him in a certain pose and then his arm wouldn't even hold, guys. It would just fall down. Very frustrating to do, especially if you're trying to pose around figures and stuff like that. Nobody wants to pose around a figure if it's freaking falling apart and it looks like it just wants to collapse at any given moment. That is not good and will not stand for anything. A better example of it is right here on this figure. Um, this Kenny Omega slash Seth Rollins. Like, look at that shoulder right there, bro. That is, I'm barely even flicking it and you guys can see that it's just right there. Look how loose that is. I've seen certain people where they do this right here and the whole shoulder does a 360 movement like that with them just doing this right here. So that is a bit, actually I have a better example of this that I want to go get right quick. So here we go with my other example. We have my custom elite WrestleMania 20 Chris Benoit. Look at this ish right here, man. Great, beautiful looking custom. And this right here happens all the John Brown time. What I think it is, is it's got to be something to do with the Stone Cold Steve Austin torso. It's got to be, that's got to be what the issue is. Maybe they made the little rotator right here too small, like the shoulder piece too small on the inside or something. But but that right there, man, that's that's terrible. Like that, that's not very good, man. And that is very upsetting. I don't know if the you know the the quality control or what the deal is. I'm not sure. I know I've had to have many vouchers before from Mattel to fix some of these issues because it's very disappointing. But cracking open a brand new figure and having that issue is very upsetting. And whether it's a loose shoulder like this, you get the loose shoulders across, you get the loose waist, you get the loose legs. That can be super duper frustrating. But on the flip side of that, guys, you can also have it where you get too tight. Now the pine cone joints, well, we've seen it with this Rey Mysterio. I think every CM Punk Elite has this problem as well where the legs are just so, like, look at this leg right here. You can't even push it forward and it pops back in place. Like, how am I supposed to pose this guy around if he won't even move his leg? This is also bum foot Rey Mysterio that someone still has not donated him a new foot, so he's forever on these crutches. I, I don't know. But the leg is just shit. Like, he'll go wide. That's fine. But then, uh, you know, he won't push forward. And if you try and try again, you're going to end up like my boy Unstable1047. I have only had this happen like twice in my whole entire life of collecting WWE action figures from Mattel, but if you move the leg around too much with those pine cone joints, you will suffer the fate of a broken off leg. Happened with my boy Unstable Christian from Unstable1047. Shout out to him for the photo here with his Survivor Series Walmart exclusive Jeff Hardy Elite action figure. You know, posing it around, trying to get a cool photo and it snaps the leg off and it's just super frustrating, man. Nothing will bum you out more than that ish right there and it's just that that will just crush you especially when you spend all that time trying to find those figures and you know you work hard you get your money you get your stuff ready to go you order that figure it's like Christmas morning you go to the door you unwrap it you get ready to go and then just the leg snaps off and it's just like God in heaven and then you know it's just it's just a big old bummer but another thing that I want to address not only do you have your tight AF non freaking posable pine cone joints you got your loosey goosey legs, your loosey-goosey shoulders, your loosey-goosey waist, you also can have a problem. Now, this one's kind of on us. You know, you're not supposed to do this, I don't think. I know it's it's kind of encouraged. I do it, uh, I, I probably do it almost every video on this channel, or I feature a fix-up on this channel in every video. And I'm talking about when you try to do a head swap and you don't heat it up hard enough, or if the, you know, the neck peg is too loosey-goosey and you snap the John Brown neck peg out of your figure and it just, it just, it will crush your spirit. The only way you can really replace this is to crack the torso's top portion, replace it with a brand new neck peg of the same size. Sometimes they're shorter, sometimes they're longer. You can end up with a giraffe ass neck. That's not what you want. You want to prevent giraffe ass necks and you could end up in this situation where the neck bends and you snap your neck peg and then it's just, you know, th that even brings it to another level. You know, you get a figure and it's in pristine condition and you try to upgrade it, you try to fix you're like, damn, I really want this head sculpt. This head sculpt will make the figure look better. I want it for this show. I want it for this shot. I feel like this head sculpt is going to look way better. And you snap the damn neck off. And it just want you just just <laughs> so that is also a huge issue that is very upsetting. And I know a ton of people have done it before. I've been tagged in so many posts, like unlimited posts. And the only thing I can tell you guys is you gotta make sure that you get those head sculpts heated up. That's why I I push it hard on action figure surgery, on action figure appointment, that you want to heat it up for a pretty good amount of time, at least 60 to 80 seconds, maybe even 90 seconds. And then if uh, if you don't feel comfortable using the hairdryer, use hot water because hot water creates that kind of lubrication 
application and it will get the head sculpt that's rubber. It will get that a lot softer than uh, the neck peg, which would be a plastic. So I feel like the, heat, the hair dryer may heat up the plastic a little bit harder than the rubber. Then if it were in water, it would do more damage or heat up, make the rubber more softer for you to get that head sculpt off. But the last issue that I want to address here today, I mean, all this shit sucks. And this last one doesn't bother me that much, but I have seen so many people. The first person that comes to mind is my boy Venomine Figs. He always hated when his figures would do what this figure right here does. And I don't know if you guys know this problem or if you've ever seen this problem. For me, it really doesn't bother me that bad just because I, I don't know what the, like the figure is in pristine condition. It feels great, whatever. Besides a few markings right here that I gotta fix, this beautiful custom that I have here of Punisher Devitt is this right here. Can you guys hear that? That little rattling noise or whatever the hell you want to call that right there. Uh, Venomine gets so pissed off when he hears that noise or that, you know, he always talks about, like, figures rattling. It really doesn't bother me. Like, I don't know. I'm not constantly shaking my figures around. And even if I was, I don't think the little rattle would do me in that much. So I don't really necessarily, you know, mind the rattling noise. Let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below. I don't know if that's a common issue. I don't know if a lot of people experience that or if they even hate that. But I would love to know what you guys think about that down in the comment section below. But I I think that is all the issues I wanted to address here. If I didn't address the issues here today that you think Mattel figures have sometimes or that you experience on a daily basis with your collection, I would love to know. You know, I'm not talking about anything else here today. I'm talking about specifically mechanical issues, articulation issues, besides the rattle. That really doesn't bother me, but I wanted to mention it to see if you guys have ever experienced that or if it bothers you at all. I know that we sometimes get some paint flaws that I could probably touch on before. I know we've gotten some massive foreheads from AJ Styles before. Maybe we can cover a part two or something like that, but for today, I did want to cover these issues, the ones that I personally firsthand experienced the most. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head that I wanted to put in today's video, but these are the worst of the worst, at least, that come to my mind firsthand. So, anyways, guys, I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Comment down below what you think of the rattling. Have you ever experienced any of these? If I didn't talk about any of the experiences you have had that are issues with Mattel WWE figures, please let me know down in the comment section below. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Gonna hunt down Kenny Omega. Bah! Now he doesn't have a foot, and he got shot dead.